In this short video, what we're going to be doing is going over the constructions within RES. So we're going to go to Apache. At the top, we're going to hit the Apache Construction Manager. And we're going to get presented with this window. Now, this window tells us the current constructions that are in the project. And this can catch some people off guard because if you just create a new one, it doesn't turn up. The reason why, it hasn't been assigned yet. So we're going to go to the External Wall tab and we're going to create a new construction. Here's one I started earlier. What I've done here is I've given it the name, a sensible name, which I can then refer back to. Easily just by looking at it. If I wanted to create a new one, I could say add construction. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this construction. And we see we've got the U values at the top, name, thickness, thermal mass. We go from outside to inside. So what I want to do now is I'm going to start building up this construction. I can copy here and press paste, uh, sorry, add. And that will add one in. I can add a cavity in between. And we got the system materials and project materials. Project materials only hold the materials that are currently being used inside the project. System materials contain the entire database. So I want this to be inner leaf brickwork. So brickwork, inner leaf, copy, paste. So we'll overwrite that one. Add in the thicknesses here. Cavity is going to go in as 50 mil. And then I probably want to place in some insulative material for the cavity fill. So insulating materials, let's go with <coughs> a very simple expanded polystyrene, that'll do. Copy material, insert, that place it in there, I'll put that in as 50 mil. Then I want my plasterboards on the interior, so I'm going to go plasterboards. Copy, add, put that in. And then for effective purposes, my construction is then done. If I was going to the hassle then of adding in my damp proof membranes or my vapor proof membranes, I can do that. And then I could look at the condensation analysis and see how the vapor pressure and dew point is working through the construction. However, for intensive purposes, this is now finished. Okay, so that's now been added into the system. What I now need to do is apply that to the building. Now, given that this is an exterior wall, save changes, I'm just going to grab the entire building I'm going to assign constructions, top left, external walls. The red line indicates an external wall. And I can see that there's something I might want to pay attention to at the top here. Yeah, quick 360. We'll deal with that in the next video. External wall. And at the moment, it's currently assigned to 2013 external wall generic. And what I want to do is replace that with a 1960 twin wall with cavity infill. Hit replace. We can see now that, and this is a good process for verification. Nothing is no longer assigned to the 2013, and everything's now assigned to the 201960. One last thing to show in the Apache construction database. <coughs> if you're doing a little bit of variation modeling, then what can be handy is to use a target parameter. So again, back here, if we hit 
appropriate target construction. What you can quickly do is create an external wall, give it a name. I would highly recommend that you state this a target one. Give it a target E value. And what that will do it will create a wall with a target U value, which is useful for quickly working out if you're doing, say, compliance modeling, what kind of U values you need to be hitting on your walls. It's debatable about the efficacy about it. Now, uh, if you don't quite know what the cons you haven't received the construction yet from the architect, then this can also be useful. And then you could then quickly use that in the models just to see how the performance of the building is working. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.